1997, Richard Norris was 22 when he shot himself in the face with a shotgun. He was drunk. He doesn't remember how or why it happened, but his mom, who was three feet away, said it was an accident. She remembers pieces of Richard's face showering her body. The gunshot had blown off his nose, cheekbones, lips, tongue, teeth, jaw, and chin, leaving just his wide brown eyes and a swirl of twisted flesh. After the 1997 accident at his home, Norris had no teeth, no nose, and only part of his tongue. He was still able to taste but could not smell. When he was out in public, usually at night, he hid behind a hat and mask. Ashamed of his appearance, Richard became a hermit for 15 years, living for nearly a decade on a foggy mountaintop in rural Virginia with his parents. They covered the mirrors in the house so Richard wouldn't have to look at his face. He stayed in his room even to eat, wore a black mask on the rare occasions he came out. According to legend, one time, the cops stopped him at gunpoint, mistaking him for a robber. Then one day, after eight years, while searching on the internet, his mom found Dr. Eduardo Rodriguez, a Baltimore reconstructive facial surgeon. He promised Richard he would make him normal. Over the next few years, Dr. Rodriguez performed dozens of surgeries using Richard's own flesh, fashioning a no-shaped appendage out of tissue from his forearm and a small chin out of flesh from his legs. It failed to make Richard normal. Dr. Rodriguez had a grander idea in mind. He was driven to achieve perfection. He had been practicing face transplants on cadavers. What he envisioned for Richard was the most extensive transplant any surgeon had ever attempted. He would give Richard a whole new face. The surgery started at dawn on March 19, 2012. The face of a recently deceased 21-year-old man named Joshua Avrasano came off as one solid flap. Skin, muscle, bone, nerves, blood vessels, tongue, everything as one piece. Joshua had just enlisted to become a marine. He died after being hit by a van. Dr. Rodriguez removed what was left of Richard's disfigured face, dissected down to the skull. He attached the new face midway back on Richard's scalp. He stabilized it with screws, tapped the jaw together, and finally draped the skin and sewed it down like a patch on a coat or a pair of jeans. You can see the junction. The incision actually goes in the coronal, extends in front of the ear, and goes all the way down to the neck. It was funded by the U.S. Department of Defense. The agency wanted to do research on face transplants that could help military members injured in the line of duty. For example, those hurt in IED explosions. Dr. Rodriguez and his team worked non-stop for 36 hours and 150 medical professionals. When they were finished, Richard's mom looked at her son and felt like he was somehow resurrected. 
She said, quote unquote, we have Richard back. I was given a gift from a brave young man in a very brave family. Richard said, I carry his legacy with me every day. Richard spent six months in the hospital and around four months doing physical therapy. The radical surgery made Richard a medical celebrity and he was covered by reporters around the world. And that's where Melanie Solis saw Richard's story in a documentary entitled A Face in the Crowd. According to Melanie, she was inspired and had to write Richard to tell him that she thought he was awesome. In a story about modern medicine, this couple met in the most modern of ways. Melanie sent Richard a message on Facebook. She said she was really moved by his story and she thinks that Richard is going to live to do great things or something like that. But Richard had gotten thousands of messages following the documentary. He took the time to respond to each one, but he didn't get to Melanie's message for months. Once he did, though, they struck up a friendship over email. They just talked and never stopped. Richard moved from Virginia to Louisiana to be with Melanie. They've built a home on the North Shore filled with love. But unfortunately, Richard's story doesn't end there with a happily ever after. He is faced a new medical crisis. News that hit Melanie particularly hard. The first thing that came to Melanie's mind was she can't live without Richard if something happens to him. The medicine Richard takes to make sure his body doesn't reject his transplanted face is called Prograph. One side effect is kidney damage. Doctors have seen his kidney function decline. Now, Richard needs a kidney transplant. At some point, he will need either a kidney transplant or will need to go on dialysis of some type, said Dr. Sean Roberts, Richard's nephrologist. Dr. Roberts explained it's not unusual to see kidney problems in transplant patients right now. The best outcome for Richard is to find a live donor, someone willing to donate one of their kidneys to him. According to Dr. Roberts, that is why they've been aggressively moving to try to find a living donor for Richard because that would be the best scenario for him to not go to dialysis but go straight to kidney transplant. Richard is registering for several different donor registries, trying to find a match, but it can take up to five years. His failing kidneys cause him to feel tired and run down. According to Melanie, she cried at work every day, but then she'd come home and she wouldn't let Richard see her like that because she didn't want Richard to see how upset she was. Melanie is turning her fears into action. She ordered magnets for her car that feature Richard's blood type and the phone number. They're asking everyone they know to register to become a donor, hoping to find a match. According to Richard, it's a waiting game. It's like a marathon. And not a sprint. In the meantime, Richard and Melanie are enjoying their quiet life on the North Shore. Richard currently counsels other patients considering face transplant. He said it's rewarding work because he knows what they'll be going through. 
and he's focusing on the positives. Richard and Melanie are facing this next challenge together. If you want to help Richard Norris, please contact 985 662 2332.